blessing by the pastoral family ministry. Birthday blessings for Jean Neptune, requested by the pastoral family ministry. Birthday blessings for Miranda, Miranda Jean Wee, requested by the pastoral family ministry. Wedding and birthday blessings for Joel and Jean Neptune, requested by the pastoral family ministry. Please rise now and welcome our celebrant Father Lucien and join us in singing with enthusiasm the opening hymn.
from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise, like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all of these people who are speaking Galileans? And how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jews 
or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Please remain seated for the sequence. Sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you return 
are returned. The gospel of the Lord. My dear beloved, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are celebrating a great feast. It is the feast of the person of the Holy Spirit. And the coming and the descending of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles together with our Blessed Mother. At the beginning of our church, the mission of the church, and also it is, could say, the end of the Easter season and Pentecost 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And we are celebrating the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit, as one of the person in the Holy Trinity, plays a significant role in the church as the Father is called the Creator, the Father called the ones who creates us, who created everything, is our Father. And the Son, who is, who is uh, the Redeemer, the Savior, Jesus came to save us. And to the mystery of the Incarnation, God showed us Himself. And uh, the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier, the one who came to sanctify, the one who came to bring us closer to the Father, to the Son, the one who is present in the Father and in the Son, the one who manifests himself the day of Jesus' baptism, and the one who came to the apostles after the resurrection to offer them peace. Certainly Jesus breathed on the apostles and he breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. Not only with the Holy Spirit, he came to bring us forgiveness, to bring them, to reconcile them to himself, to one another. Because Jesus recognized the situation, the state of being his disciples where they need that peace. They need that tranquility. They need that peace of mind, peace of heart. So that was the first thing Jesus offered his disciples after his resurrection, the first gift. Jesus realized that without peace, they will not be able to do the work, to continue the mission. And Jesus went while the door were locked. And Jesus entered, appeared before his disciples. He said, peace be with you. What does that mean? Offering peace to someone is offering reconciliation. Offering forgiveness. At that particular moment, my brothers and sisters, that the only gift that the disciples needed at that moment. Because... You will remember at Jesus' trial, when Jesus was arrested, when Jesus was beaten, when Jesus was, when they were crucifying him, all his friends ran away. All of them ran away. And uh, Peter denied him. He did not know the Lord. Would you imagine now? The one that was beaten, the one that was crucified, the one that was humiliated. Now went to the tomb and went and rose again from the, from the dead. So he went to look for his friends. 
We went to look for them to console them, to unite with them again. But when he came to, to them, he did not reprimand them. He just said to them, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. These frightened men, my brothers and sisters, could not expect more than this. Peace. It is not like us sometimes, even in our own life, in our dealing with each other, with one another. When someone betrayed you, when someone did something wrong to you or hurts you, we tend to retaliate. We tend to strike back. We tend to say the same way you make me suffer, I will make you suffer. This is not what Jesus did. Jesus went to his disciples to offer them peace. Because my brothers and sisters, without peace, what good could we do? And we are living in a world where we are witnessing violence, retaliation, injustices, and massacre. Where what uh, the vocabulary we, we, we hear now, people are saying it's violence. You strike me, I will strike you back. You hit me, I will hit you back. Even sometimes we see parents, parents are teaching their children to react the same way. Quick to react. But my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, we need to be a witness of peace, witness of love. Witness of forgiveness. We should not be the same way or with those who do not know Christ. With those who are rejecting Christ. With those who are following the way of the world. But we are following Jesus Christ. Our behavior, our attitude should be different. Could you imagine our home, our house, every day it is called division. Every day is fighting. Every day is, you know, bad words. What would you expect your children will, will inherit from you? What kind of attitude that you expect? Would you expect your children to behave different? No, they would not behave different. The world will produce the same kind of behavior, the same kind of attitude that they see, they are witnessing every day in the house. Mom and dad, brothers and sisters. So, as Christians, as a Christian family, we should behave differently. Because we are called to be witness of love. We are called to be different in this world. We are called to be disciples of, of Jesus Christ. So in this Sunday of Pentecost, we are invited to ask the Holy Spirit for His fruits, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, to grow in His presence, to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, guiding us, leading us, my brothers and sisters, to give us peace, joy, true character, to give us, to make, to, for us to be gentle, to be charitable. It is very important. Yes, certainly the disciples, as we heard in the, in the first reading, people were talking in different languages, but they understood each other. The gifts of God, 
It is not just only the gift of tongues, my brothers and sisters, the coming of the Holy Spirit brings to us. He brings us the gift of service. The gift of service. How could we serve? How to serve each other? How to be Christ's instrument to each other? The same way Jesus taught us the night he was betrayed, the same night he washed his disciples' feet, he commanded them to serve, to love one another, to be in the world as an instrument of service, as an instrument of love. We cannot remain just speaking in tongues. We cannot, we cannot remain saying that we are Christians. The word of God, my brothers and sisters, need to be the word of action. The same way Jesus come, God come to us in the person of Jesus. God incarnate in being in the person of Jesus. That means it is not a God of abstraction that stay far away from us, but it is a God who come to our history, come to become one of us, be part of us. And he gave himself for us on the cross. He dies for us. So it is very important if we say we are Christians, our life should be different, my brothers, in the way we live. We need to be an instrument of peace and justice. Instrument of peace and justice. Yes, if we are not, are we ready to say that we are Christ's followers? Are we ready to say that we are following Jesus? Do you have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ in you? Do you have the heart, the mind of God? Do you let the Spirit guide you, lead to you, teach you? That's, what, that's a promise of Jesus made to his disciples. And he, he gave us the same Spirit. The day of your baptism, the day of our baptism, we receive the power of the Holy Spirit. We receive the life, the very life of God in us. We receive the, 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 the Holy Spirit. And it is not just only at our confirmation that we receive the Holy Spirit. At confirmation, we were sealed with the gift. We were equipped to do the service, to do the work of God. That's why when we baptize and we confirm, we receive. We receive, we seal. We seal. Now you are well equipped to fight against evil, to fight against the temptation of this world. And we become a friends of Christ. We, we are called to walk in the shoes of Jesus Christ. So as we are celebrating the, the Feast of Pentecost today, we need to be evaluating ourselves to say, how am I living my life? My baptismal call, my mission, the mission that I receive, the mission that Christ shared with me through my baptism. How do I live? Am I being a witness? Or what fear do I have that impacts me to be the mouth of Christ, to speak His word, to live His word? Am I afraid to say who I am? Am I afraid to, uh, to reveal my identity as a friend of Jesus Christ? Now it is much more easier to say, you know, I am so, I am this, I am that. It is much more easier to say, to reveal even my, your gender identity than to reveal that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. It is much more easy to say, you know, I am this, I am that. Then to say, you know, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Because we lack of the power of the Holy Spirit, or we are not free. If you have the power of the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, my friends, you should not be afraid to say who you are. Who you are, this is who I am. I am a friend of Jesus Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I am a Christian. I am a Catholic. I should not be afraid. Could you imagine, my brothers and sisters, the day when the disciples receive the power of the Holy Spirit? When they receive the power of the Holy Spirit? This also explains why St. Peter, in the first homily at Pentecost, preached. 
the theme of repentance following the proclamation of Jesus as Christ and Lord. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside of the law. But God raised them up, having freed him from death. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. The world needs to hear the message again, even in our church, because in our church there is so much division, so much ideologies, so much subjectivity, so much people have their own idea and they want to follow their own agenda. As we heard, as you heard, there was a, there was a country now, um, there was a synod, there was, there was a synod that happened in one of the European countries. Every single thing, my brothers, even the leader of the church, every single thing they are embracing is contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the teaching of Jesus Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, to lead us, to teach us. To lead us, to teach us. We should not be afraid to say who you are, who are we. We are the friends of Jesus Christ. And you should not be afraid, whatever you are going through. Even, you know, as the disciples, they went through many trials, Many difficulties. As this week, somebody sent me a message. He said, uh, you know, do you know how the apostles died? And some of them been martyred. And most of them, many, most of them, most of them died by martyrdom. By martyrdom. And some of them, they, they crucified them upside down. Upside down. So we should not be afraid, my friend. But we have, we have to know that God is with us. Jesus is with us. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. You carry that power. You carry that person, the person of the Holy Spirit. You carry it. So let us pray for each other and for one another. That we may have strength and courage to bring the good news. To Jesus, to, to others, to our brothers and sisters. This is that this does not mean for us to be arrogant in, in, the, in the world, to be arrogant. No, we are called to live in humility. We are called to be humble. We are called to be servant of all. By preaching the word of God, we are called, we are we are we are not calling, you know, to pretend we are better than the other one. Huh? But with the sense of humility. With a sense of you know, wisdom, we need to cultivate that in our lives. It is through our example, through our model, that we can convince the other that the life we are living, it is not our life. It is the life we receive from God. As simple says, it is not I who live. It is the it is Christ who lives in me. Can you say that? Are you able to say if I am living? It is not my life that I am living. I am living the life of God, the life of Christ. May God bless us in the Lord the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, Consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For our men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was departed from Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified, not just Pilate. He suffered death that was buried. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who is our inspiration, lead us this day in our prayers to our loving Father. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. So we come, Holy Spirit, we are tired. Come. Come, Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. come, We pray for world leaders, especially the elected official of our nation, that they work for peace. May the Holy Spirit reveal to all the futility of war and create a desire for peace in the hearts of all mankind. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We ask the Holy Spirit to bestow on us the wisdom and insight to care for the earth and environment and to preserve God's gift of water, land, and climate for ourselves and the good of those who come after us. We pray to the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For our St. Helen community that the Spirit of God lies deep in the heart and mind of every parishioner and family. So the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control will form the shape of family life for all our families and parishioners. We pray to the Lord. Come, Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. We pray for our parish children and young people who receive the Holy Eucharist, for those who receive the sacrament of confirmation last week, those who are going to middle and high school, colleges and universities, that they may the Holy Spirit guide them in their choice of future career and give witness of faith and love of Christ through their lives. We pray to the Lord. Come, Holy Holy Spirit, come. In gratitude for our help and for healing, for all who are sick in our community, particularly those undergoing treatment to cancer and mental health illnesses, through the intercession of our beloved Mother Mary, May they find healing and comfort in Christ. For the terminally ill, that the Holy Spirit be their guide. His gentle care enfold them, that their grief give way to tenderness, and that God's love for their solace as they prepare to be welcomed into eternal happiness. We pray to the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For those who died and whose names are listed in this week's church bulletin, may they celebrate everlasting life in Christ Jesus. And we pray for the intention to be whole in the silence of our hearts and for those who have asked us to pray for them and their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Holy Spirit, God of glory, give of all the gifts, mercifully answer our prayers and grant that we may be led and inspired in our daily lives by the Holy Spirit so that we may show our love and mercy to all and together we may welcome your Holy Spirit and rejoice to proclaim 
Jesus is Lord both now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Dear parishioners, the weekly collection posted in the bulletin shows that we're working below budget. Please remember your weekly contributions to support the church. It is very important to support our parish community. Thank you and God bless you.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts be prayed by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a still hour, when something was handed into the chalice and was for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the eternal covenant, which will be poured for you for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring us to eternal life.
Welcome back to your parishioners. And welcome all of those who are visiting us today for the first time. If you would like to be a member of our parish, please take a registration form at the main entrances of the church. Please fill it in and give it to one of the ushers or ministers of hospitality. Or you can pass by the office Monday through Fridays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. St. Heather's School is now accepting new students for the school year 2023 to 2024 from PK4, that's age 4 and up. VPK step up for students and AAA scholarships are accepted. Free breakfast and lunch are provided. For more information, please contact the school office at 954-739-7094, extension 2002. Those who give deposits for the pilgrimage, please remember to send it up installments. Final payment is July the 3rd, 2023. We will leave Miami for Lisbon, Portugal. The price is $3,998 and includes airfare, first class hotel, tours, guided tours, breakfast, and dinner date. For more information, please stop by the church office or call 954-731-7314. We are accepting donations to purchase candles, hosts, and wine for our Eucharistic celebration. Or if you want to sponsor a project in the church, we would very much appreciate your help. We thank all of you who continue to support our parish community. You can contact the parish office or make your contributions or donations through WeShare.com. Thanks again, and may God bless you and your loved ones abundantly. The month of May is a month of Mary, our mother. We will celebrate on Wednesday, May the 31st, which is a feast of visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mother with a Mass at 7 p.m. You are all invited to attend. This St. Helen Women's Group is holding a lunch, lunch sale after the 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 12 p.m. mass. That is next Sunday the 4th. The menu includes a fish platter for $12, baked or jerked chicken platter for $10. It's served with salad, rice and peas, and a drink. Your support is greatly appreciated. Please take home a copy of the Sunday Bulletin for more information. It is, more, it is very important to read it so that you can be informed. The schedule of all church activities is posted in the bulletin. Thanks again and have a blessed day. Be safe going home. Thank you. Let us pray. O oh God, who bestowed heavenly gifts upon your church, save God, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit pour out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. We ask that this our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. As today we are concluding the Easter season and uh, we you are going to receive a special blessing, a solemn blessing, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. 
Wherever you are, open your heart, open your soul, open your soul to receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Yeah. 